the Kraft Foods Company presents Harold Perry as the Great Gildersleeve. Great Gildersleeve is brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company, makers of Parquet Margarine. Millions of women all over America serve Parquet because it tastes so good. Why, Parquet tastes like it should cost twice as much. To market, to market, to get some Parquet. Home again, home again, try it today. You'll like it, you'll love it, like millions who say their favorite margarine is. P-A-R-K-A-Y, Parquet Margarine, made by Kraft. Well, let's see what Summerfield's water commissioner is doing this morning. He strides into the office full of purpose and breakfast, ready to accomplish great things. La, 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 la. Ah, good morning, Bessie. Good morning, Mr. Gildersleeve. Nice to see you on the ball, Bessie. On the what? Nice to see you working. Oh, that's why I'm here. Uh. <laughs> Bessie, where's that old water bill that bashful collector of ours couldn't get? The water commissioner's going to get it today or turn off somebody's water. You are? That bill must be six months old. Should have been brought to my attention long ago, Bessie. Where is it? Right on your desk, Mr. Gildersleeve. It is? How long has it been there? Six months. (laughs) Six months, eh? (laughs) Must be about halfway down this pile, then. What a neat desk Bessie keeps for me. Can't even see the water cooler over the top. (laughs) Bessie, this pile has grown overnight. What are all these things? Well, they came in the mail, Mr. Gildersleeve. Huh? Let's see. Circular from the Mother's Helper Baby Laundry. How do they get my name? Hogan Brothers Tiny Tot Shop. Baby Foods. You get a baby in the house and right away 500 salesmen know about it. Oh, and by the way, there was one in early this morning and I told him to come back. Who, Bessie? A baby salesman. Bessie, we don't have time for baby salesmen here at the office. Oh, but this You one... spend entirely too much time talking to salesmen. That'll never get us anywhere, Bessie. Got me three lunches last week. Remember that nice water hydrant salesman? Bessie, let's find the water bill. That's another thing you have to learn. When you start something, follow it through. Oh, I will, Mr. Gildersleeve. He's taking me to dinner tonight. (laughs) Bessie, see who that is. If it's that salesman, tell him I'm not in. Tell a fib? A business fib, Bessie. Yes, sir. You say so, sir. Hello again, miss. Is Mr. Gildersleeve in? Well, I guess not. Besides, he isn't seeing any salesmen. No, sir, I'm too busy. I'll bet Henry Kaiser doesn't talk to everybody. Well, I don't have anything to sell him. I have something to give him. A little matter of a thousand dollars. A thousand? I'm not that busy. <laughs> Bessie, what's the idea of telling people I'm not in? But Mr. Gildersleeve. Uh, Mr. Gildersleeve? That's me, all right. Uh, come in, Mr. Uh, Armstrong. Armstrong. Well, a fine old name. <laughs> Come on in, Mr. Armstrong. We'll close the door. Bessie, I'm not in. Thousand dollars, eh? Well, you're not the man who sold me that stock in the old Faithful Oil Company in 1929, are you? No, no, Mr. Gildersleeve. Well, sit down, Mr. Armstrong. Thank you. Have a cigar. Thank you. Uh, This is the thousand dollar insurance policy I'm offering you. Give me back that cigar. Oh, but I'm giving you the policy, Mr. Gildersleeve, to hold in trust for your baby. Oh? Yes, it seems she has quite a few friends. They got together and bought her a little uh, go-to-college policy. Well, who did that? An organization known as the Jolly Boys. The Jolly Boys? (laughs) Here's the cigar. (laughs) Let me light it for you. Oh, thank you. The Jolly Boys. I knew they were fond of me, but I didn't think they were so crazy about my baby. Isn't that nice, thinking of my little baby? Well, I helped them think of it. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, well, I appreciate it, (laughs) and so does the baby. Well, now all you have to do, Mr. Gildersleeve, is fill out this form. Be glad to. Let's see. Name of parent or guardian? Uh, Throckmorton. P. Gildersleeve. Residence. 
217 Elm Street, Summerfield. Name of insured. Name of insured? Oh, the baby's name. I just happen to think. She doesn't have a name. I found her in the back of my car last month. Well, I did. <laughs> I know you did, but wasn't there some identification pinned on her? Well, there was a pin, but no identification. <laughs> well, what do you call her? We call her Baby. Hmm. Well, when you have a name for her, just give me a ring at this number. But I'll hold the policy. Oh, then I'll get on it right away. Good day. Uh, good day, Mr. Armstrong. Uh, Bessie, Bessie, get Judge Hooker on the telephone and tell him I'm coming right over. Yes, Mr. Gildersleeve, and I found the delinquent water bill. A thousand dollars for baby. It, what water bill? Well, the one you're going to collect today or turn off his water. Stick it back in the pile, Bessie. Oh, but Mr. Gildersleeve... What do those delinquents expect me to do? Neglect my baby's education? <laughs> Gildy. Judge, that was a nice thing. Nice thing you and the Jolly Boys did for the baby. Oh, was the man over? Very considerate of you, Judge. Thank you, Gildy. Far-sighted, too. When she comes of college age, we want to be sure she has the proper start. Well, that's nice. Because if she's still in your care, Gildy, she'll need the money. What? Who knows? Eighteen years from now, you may not even be water commissioner. You may be hobbling around reading meters. <laughs> <laughs> Now, see here, Hooker. Only kidding, Gildy. Well, don't kid so close to home. <laughs> Judge, have you found out anything yet about the baby's family? I'm checking, Gildy. Checking? You've been checking for a whole month. We don't even have a name to put on the insurance policy. Well, then, under the circumstances, my advice to you is to name her yourself. Is that legal? Temporarily, she's a member of your household, Gildy. So gather your little family around the conference table and name the infant. Name the baby. Well, that should be fun. Just one thing, Gilly. Let me admonish you to select a name with utmost care. Oh, naturally. It'll mean a great deal to the child as she grows and flowers into womanhood. I remember how much my name meant to me. Horace Hooker? <laughs> <laughs> yes, Gilly. Horace Greeley Hooker for Horace Greeley. Judge, what are you doing? Opening the window. I've always taken that name very seriously. Well, don't take it that seriously. Don't jump, Judge. <laughs> I'm not, Gildy. I'm just looking out over the horizon. Oh. Horace, for Horace Greeley, that eminent early American journalist. It was he who advised the new generation, go west, young man. Yes, yes. As a matter of fact, his exact words were, and I quote verbatim, if you have no friends nor family to aid you, no prospect open to you there, turn your face to the great west. Gildy, where are you going? I'm going west, Judge. <laughs> Don't fall out of the window. Fine little dinner, Bertie. Little? Leroy Folger napkin. Another cup of coffee, Mr. Gilsey? Coffee? Not tonight, Bertie. You can clear the table. Yes, sir. And join us as soon as you can, Bertie. You'll be interested in this little family conference. Yes, sir. As soon as I get baby ready for bed. Uh, Uncle Mord, what's the conference all about? Yeah, Uncle, what's the big secret? I got things to do. Well, children, you'll be happy to know that today the Jolly Boys presented me with a $1,000 go-to-college insurance policy. Great, Uncle. What subject are you going to take? It's for the baby, Leroy. <laughs> the baby? Oh, that's wonderful, Unky. So she can be a co-ed. That's right. So tonight, we've got to decide upon a name for her. A name? Mm-hmm, that's right. Okay. Mary, conference over. So long, huh? Leroy, you come back here. We're going to give this a little thought. Marjorie, hand me the family album off the buffet. Oh, that? Well, it's not a bad idea to pick a family name. Thank you. A lot of dead wood there. <laughs> I'll take Aunt Sarah here. When they ran the railroad through her house, she picked up quite a little money. Might name her Sarah. 
Oh, Unky. And then there's Aunt Hattie. She. <laughs> Who's that holding the derby? <laughs> The fat little boy in the tight pants. Marjorie, that's me. I was still growing. <laughs> oh, Unc, the album's no good. All the people in there are corny. No, no. I know, Unky, the telephone directory. Telephone directory? Well, naturally, I'll go look. A lot of people pick names out of the directory. Well, I don't know. Let's take one at random. How's Adele, Unky? Adele? Well, keep going. Hey, Unc, how about naming her after some movie star? Well, I hadn't thought of that. Sure, they give girls swell names. Jinx Falkenberg, Ginger Rogers, the Body McDonald. Leroy. <laughs> Can you give me 35 cents, Unc? I'll catch a double feature and do a little research. You'll sit right there, young man. And don't get any ideas about the movies until we're through. Hello, Pauline. This is Marjorie. Marjorie, what are you doing? I just ran across an old girlfriend's name in the telephone book. Oh, my goodness. Uh, Pauline, I've got so much to tell you. Marjorie, terminate the conversation. Some other time. Goodbye. Uh, goodbye. Now, my dear, do you suppose we can continue the family conference? Oh, of course, Unky. Fine. What's that? Oh, that's Red's horn. He said he might honk. Marjorie, what about naming the baby? Well, I won't be long, Unky. Red never has much gas. D- <laughs> Uh, teenagers. Unc, I've been sitting here like a good little boy. How about letting me go to the movies? I'll rake the leaves tomorrow. All right, Leroy, you might as well go, too. Uh, here. Thanks, Unc. And I'll bet I come back with some swell names. Well, don't come back with anything like Trigger. <laughs> trigger, Gildersleeve? Hey, no bad, huh? Leroy, get out of here. Hi, George, if you want to get something done, do it yourself. Oh, Bertie. Yes, Mr. Gilsey, we're coming. Well, well, the baby. She just came in to say good night. Great. Put the basket right here on the chair, Bertie. Maybe she'll have some ideas. We're going to give her a name, Bertie. That's good. It's about time. <laughs> kitchy, kitchy, coo. How are you this evening? <laughs> That's a little girl. Uh, Shake hands with my finger. How do you do? (laughs) What do you think you should be called, little girl? I don't think I can spell that. Bertie, do you have any ideas? I'll tell you one thing, Mr. Gillsleeve. I think a person ought to have a name that fits. Oh, I agree with that. What do you mean? Well, just like they say in the horoscope books, follow the zodiac signs. The zodiac signs? Well, there's a sign to fit everything and everybody. But we don't know her birthday. Well, she's about six months old, so she could be a February Aquarius. That's the sign of the great president. Now, Bertie, we're not going to call a baby George or Abraham. <laughs> Or she could be a March Pisces. Pisces? Is that good, Bertie? It is in this case. You're the water commissioner, and that's the water sign. Well. <laughs> well, now we're getting someplace. Baby, you're the water commissioner's little Pisces. <laughs> <laughs> and on the other hand, she's got a lot of good traits that come under Gemini. Gemini? Of course, Sagittarius really fits because they're so friendly. Uh-huh. I knew a Sally Sagittarius. <laughs> and then there's Leo and Capricorn. Now, that's a good sign. Bertie, they... we can't name the baby after all the signs. I don't know, Miss Gilsley. That little roly-poly's got the good qualities of all 12. <laughs> you may have to call a Gemini, Aquarius, Sally Sagittarius, Leo, Capricorn, Gilsley. <laughs> All right, Bertie. A lot of cooperation a man gets around this house. Come on, baby. That's the best suggestion yet. Be sure to stay tuned in tonight because Parquet Margarine has a big surprise for you. Have your pencil and paper handy, too. Then you'll be prepared for the big news that comes at the end of this program.
Well, let's get back to the great Gildersleeve. His agile brain cells are still beating themselves against a stone wall as he tries to think of a name for the new baby. Hmm, perhaps a mid-morning cup of coffee will help. Ah, oh, hello, P.V. Yeah, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> what can your friendly neighborhood druggist do for you this morning? Well, I'll have a cup of coffee. And P.V., I want to thank you jolly boys for that go-to-college policy you bought for the baby. She's a cute little guy. We were very happy to do it. We'll see it's meeting tonight, won't we? Oh, I wouldn't miss it. Now, do you suppose you can serve me that hot cup of coffee? Well, I see no reason why I can. You know, a man was in here the other morning and he asked if we served eggs. I said, we serve everyone. <laughs> no reflection, Mr. Gildersleeve. That was a little witticism. That was a little witticism in 1890, Peavy. It's as old as your eggs. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> All right, Peavy, let's have the coffee. I have things on my mind. Well, so I. There you are. Before I can even fill out the policy, I have to think of a name for the baby. Well, every baby ought to have a name, Mr. Gildersleeve. Same as every drugstore ought to have a stamp machine. Yep. <laughs> What's this, Peavy? At least the man said that. Oh. Well, you can't send a girl to college without a name. Well, the man may be right. And the little family certainly didn't come up with anything. It isn't exactly sanitary keeping stamps in your cash drawer. Looks like it's entirely up to me. And on the other hand, I don't know how my regular customers would feel about it. Feel about what? Putting ten cents in the machine and only getting nine cents where to stand. <laughs> Confounded Peavy, we're not talking about stamp machines. No, I am. I've considered installing one for several months now. Uh, the man suggested I put it right over there by the news rack. All right, Peavy, go ahead. Talk about your stamp machine. Get it all out of your system. Then maybe we can talk about a name for my baby. Very well, Mr. Gildersleeve. I always enjoy talking about what the customer wants to talk about. Fine. Any suggestion from you? Well, I suggested we put it right by the door. <laughs> what? The stamp machine. Oh, my goodness. You know, they're very ingenious machines. For a dime, you can get three threes. And for a nickel, you can get... TV for two cents, oh, I... pennies don't fit, Mr. Gilly. Oh! <laughs> I'm getting out of here. Goodbye. Hey, uh, Commish. I've done everything a barber can do. Yeah, uh, thanks. No, no, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hmm? Hey, uh... Face looks like you've been shaving yourself, Commissioner. ha, ha, ha. By the time you get here on Saturday, you don't need a shave. You need a vulcanizing job. <laughs> now, Floyd. Yeah. Now, up we go. <laughs> What's the matter? <laughs> Busy. Yeah, I'm sorry, Commish. You ain't been in for so long, I forgot how the blood rushes to your feet. <laughs> I wasn't quite ready to come up, Floyd. I was thinking. Yeah? Floyd. Yeah? Have you heard of any good girls' names lately? Oh, so that's it. <laughs> What's the matter, Commish? That fair child dame give you the sack? Yeah, no, Floyd. As a matter of fact, I've been seeing Adeline more than ever. Just branching out, huh? What? Well, maybe I can help you at that. Here's a little address book I found in the chair last winter. Floyd! Must have fell out of somebody's hip pocket. Yep. Yeah, I have no need for an address book. I only want to name the baby. Oh, yeah? This one's loaded with babies. <laughs> Get this. Huh? Maggie Simeon. Mimi Simpson. Sounds classy, Commissioner. Put it away, Floyd. I'm not going to name the baby that way. Okay, don't say I didn't try to help. Hey, let me even up this sideburn. Mm -hmm. Um, say, Commish, if you're really stuck for a name, why don't you let me call the missus? Lovey's got swell ideas for names. She named herself. Lovey? Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Floyd. <laughs> Well, you can't beat a woman's touch. Well, you may have something there. Come to think of it, I haven't discussed the baby's name with Adeline. Might just drop by on my way home. Oh, hold it then, Commish, while I get the scissors again. What now, Floyd? Well, if you're seeing Miss Fairchild, I better trim the lip with the fringe on top. <laughs> oh, well. Not a bad idea. <laughs> Ah, 
say that line. Take your time. See, better write a few names down before I forget them. Nancy. That was Bessie's suggestion. Mimi. Man scraping the bottom of the barrel when he starts getting names out of lost address books. I'm sorry I kept you waiting, Sock Morton, but I didn't know you were coming, so I had to do a little primping. Oh, uh, well, no need to primp for me. I'm just a neighbor. Well, I've always been one to encourage the good neighbor policy. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, uh, Mm, nice perfume, Adeline. Thank you, kind sir. It's frightfully expensive. Uh, uh, mm, I like it. <laughs> then I'll sit on this side of you. I put it behind my left ear. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the reason I came over, Adeline, is to get your help in naming the baby. Oh, are you going to give a cute little doll in a name? Yeah, it's even harder than you think. I've been racking my brain for two days. Well, I don't see why it should be so difficult, Ralph Morton. Why don't you name her after somebody near and dear to you? Well, we sort of gave up on family names. Ralph well, Morton, the nearest and dearest, isn't necessarily a member of the family. Ha. Huh. <laughs> Who's nearest and dearest to you? Well, uh... Who'd you rather be with than anyone else? Well... The Jolly Boys. <laughs> Drop Morton P. Gildersleeve, I like that. To think you prefer the company of the Jolly Boys to me. I was only thinking of tonight, Adeline. It's our regular meeting night. Oh, but mm -hmm. I... Now, Adeline, sit right down again. That's a girl. <laughs> Ask me who's dearest and nearest six nights a week. Oh, you. <laughs> <laughs> What have you been doing? You're writing a note on that envelope to little old me? Oh, no, no. Those are just some girls' names. Girls? Well, yes, I am. Carrying girls' names around on an envelope? Hmm? Throckmorton, you fickle Yankee, you. But that line. <laughs> Who's that Mimi? Well, just a name I picked up in the barbershop. Well, I'm only looking for a name for the baby. Well, don't come looking to Adeline. You can just go to those jolly boys you'd rather be with or your jolly girls. Look, Adeline. Your hat, Mr. Gildersleeve. Uh, all right. <laughs> I will go to the jolly boys. Goodbye. Even when you're right, you can't explain things to a woman. <laughs> This is going to work out great. The Jolly Boys furnished the policy. They have a right to help name the baby. Imagine Adeline wanting to name the baby after her. Oh, these vain women. Hi, Miss. Oh, Floyd, you're here early. Yep. And since you phoned us about naming the baby, I've really been mulling it over. You have? Yeah, sit down, Commish. Now, look, before I give you my idea, here's a little something for the baby. Oh, you shouldn't have done it, Floyd. Admit one, Floyd's Barbershop. <laughs> That's for a first hair, Bob, Commish. On the house. <laughs> yeah, now about the name. Look. Huh? Uh, Commish, uh, me and the missus don't have no family, so I never had a kid named after me. What's this, Floyd? What do you think of Flo? Flo, Floyd? Yeah. Well, I hadn't really thought that. Whoa, hello, fellas. Gilded, Floyd. <laughs> Hey, think it over, Commissioner, will you? Flo. Yeah, yeah, well, come on in, Judge. Hello, Chief. Hey, Evie. Yes, sir, boy. Well, let's everybody open up a Coke, then we get on with the meeting. Huh? You have the opener, Chief? Chief of police with a bottle opener? Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> Floyd? Here it is, Chief. Gildy, may I have a word with you? And what is it, Judge? Well, Gildy, I've always considered myself very close to your little family. Now, about a name for the baby. Yes, Horace? What do you think of Hortense? <laughs> Hortense? Hortense. <laughs> I don't know, Judge. I'll have to think that over. Well, let's call the uh, meeting. Commissioner, before you open the meeting... Yes, Judge? Uh, uh, Chief? How about the, this name for the baby? Yes, Donald. It being a girl, what do you think of Donna? Oh, my goodness. You too, Chief. You asked for a suggestion. Oh, excuse me, Chief. Huh? Can for Coke, Mr. Gellyfane? Well, thanks, baby. I can use one. Well, let's get the meeting underway, fellas. Mr. Gellyfane. Yeah? I've been giving the name quite a little thought, and I came up with quite a cute one. All right. Out with it, Peavy. What do you think of Peavet? Peavet. <laughs> oh, for 
good. And I thought women were vain. Gee, vet. What's the matter with all you fellas wanting to name the baby after yourself? Well, what's wrong with Donna? It's my mother's name over in Salinas. Oh, Flo's better than that. Perhaps we should open the meeting before Stay we... out of this, Hooker. Don't try to lawyer this thing. Quiet, Floyd. This is this... democracy at work. Well, Wait a minute. Quiet, Floyd. Shut up, everybody. I've already made my decision. Yeah? Until we can peacefully decide on a name, we'll go on calling her baby. Baby. We shouldn't be fighting anyway. Of course we shouldn't, fellas. We're all jolly boys. No, no, I wouldn't say that. You... <laughs> oh, the heck with the name. Let's have a little song, huh? This one's for the kid. Well, nice selection, Floyd. Sweetest little baby Everybody knows But she's mighty like a rose mm. Looking for her mother Wonder who she is With her eyes so shiny blue Make you think that heaven Is coming close to Well, the great Gildersleeve has to have a name for the baby. There's no doubt about that. And that means news for you. Tonight, Parquet announces a series of weekly big prize contests. By naming the Gildersleeve Mystery Baby, you can win the new 1949 Ford and maybe a grand bonus prize of $1,000 in cash. Just listen to all these prizes. Four big, beautiful, streamlined Ford sedans will be won each week for five weeks. Twenty Fords in all. And every week for five weeks, Parquet will also award... Forty General Electric Table Radios. Twenty Cory Coffee Makers. Twenty Toastmaster Automatic Pop-Up Toasters. Sixty new $10 bills. That's 721 prizes in all. And remember, the person who sends in the name finally chosen gets $1,000 in addition to his 1949 Ford. So think of a name for the Gildersleeve Mystery Baby. She's a small, blonde baby girl. Then write your choice on an entry blank. They're available at your food dealers with complete contest rules. Or if you prefer, you can use a plain piece of paper. Send entry with one red flap from the end of a package of parquet margarine and your name and address... To Parquet Margarine, Box 736, Chicago 77, Illinois. Be sure to enclose your name and address of your Parquet dealer. Remember, get an entry blank from your dealer. Don't forget the red end flap from a package of Parquet. Go after one of those 201949 Fords. They're big, handsome, high-powered. Today, send your entry to Parquet Margarine, Box 736, Chicago 77, Illinois. Hurry, the first week's contest closes at midnight, October 16th. Well, little baby, did you hear that? We've asked all our friends to help find a name for you. Oh, you like that, eh? Makes you feel pretty important, doesn't it? <laughs> well, there'll be a lot of fine names coming in to choose from. So please, folks, send in your names for baby. Old Uncle Mort needs help on this thing. Well, I do. Good night, folks. <laughs> These days, it's a wise homemaker who cooks with cheese. Cheese prices have come down. Cheese is a bargain in nutrition. Actually, cheese is a main dish food, a protein food. Ounce for ounce, no other basic food matches cheese for high-quality, complete protein, for calcium, phosphorus, and other nutrients from milk. Kraft's pasteurized process varieties are always smooth-melting, perfect for cooking. Ask for medium mellow Kraft American, sharp old English, or for rich yet mild cheddar flavor, get the famous cheese food, Velveeta. Be wise, serve thrifty, golden good cheese dishes often. <laughs> 